accordance with the safe zone sign law, adequate notice in this meeting was provided to the Hunter County Democrat on May 7, 2004. The notice is also posted in the board office. Copy was filed with the township clerk. The same law, all provisions of public law, 1975, Chapter 231, Public Act. I accept. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
two percent of its own. I was a teacher with the Princeton School District, which always had economically disadvantaged students, students with disabilities, and English language learners in significantly bigger proportions than this community does. And I can't understand why these scores are what they are in the middle class and in an affluent community. Lastly, I will leave you with a question, which maybe somebody can research for me later, about the actual number of classrooms, regular classrooms, not counting specials and classrooms and teachers in each grade, K to eight, and how many full-time students are in each of those classrooms. I have heard rumors that many of the classes are very small, but I'm hoping that you'll prove me wrong. And I think I have maybe a minute left, so I just made a little game here. This is some numbers, and perhaps you can guess which one is the East Admiral School Superintendent. Person A, salary, $192,000. Student population, 1,394. B, Salary, $197,000. Student population, $4,592. C, $219,000. Population, $3,251. D, $235,000. 7,095 students. E, $244,000 salary, 4,204 students. F, $262,000 salary, 9,100. One students and G, $173,000, 370 students. This last G is also guaranteed by contract a 3% raise for each of the next four years, additional $5,000 a year towards retirement account, work days 260, 12 sick days a year, 22 vacation days a year, three personal days a year, and 12 plus two pay. Jason Bloom, East Anwell. First, I'd like to apologize to uh, board member Hutchins. Um, at the last Board of Ed meeting, um, I didn't mention him as being a volunteer at last year's PTO color run. That was an oversight and mistake on my part, Paul. Um, he was there with the Anwell Valley Ambulance Corps, the rescue squad. Paul, if you would have spoken up at that meeting, I would apologize to you on the spot. It was a complete oversight on my part. Uh, he ended up emailing me the next day. Um, Thank you for supporting the PTO and uh, for your rescue squad support as well. That's my first point. Uh, my second point, at previous Board of Ed meetings, President Miller has made comments that taping meetings would not increase engagement. As you're all aware, I taped the last meeting and I'm currently taping this meeting right now. Um, I also uh, posted it um, on YouTube and referenced it in the VIP. Um, in the course of three weeks, it has had about 425 views. I've had several people who, through public comments on Facebook, private messages on Facebook, email, or face-to-face -face conversations thank me for doing this. With everyone's busy schedules and, and commitments, it makes it tough to attend meetings in person. However, this gave them a way to stay informed and involved. And I would anticipate some of the people here right now are because of that meeting being posted online. My third and final point for this first open session um, is it my understanding that the meeting that was originally scheduled for Tuesday was moved to today due to lack of quorum? Correct. Thank you. So that means that five out of nine of our Board of Ed members were not able to make Tuesday's meeting. Correct. Which is a previously scheduled commitment that they've known well ahead of time. Correct. Thank you. Um, my last point with that is, um, it was moved to the same date and time as the regular and long-standing township committee meeting, which one of your board members was previously on, Mr. Miller. Um, in the future, um, if a meeting is rescheduled, I would ask that it's not scheduled at the same date and time as the township meeting. If an effort can be made to at very least, if it's the same date scheduled for a different time, that would be appreciated. Just wanted to follow up a little bit about 
about the test scores uh, because I don't know. Most of that was news to me. I don't know if it was news to you guys, but it's been a month now. I don't know if that information was accurate or was not accurate. Did anyone do the research to see if what was presented, albeit maybe not in the most productive fashion, was accurate information? Was that information accurate? I did, and I'll be addressing that unless it was that report. It will be addressed. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I addressed it with you on the phone also. Now, there was a much smaller scope that you and I discussed about the science scores specifically over a course of three years. The presentation that was sort of what was delivered last meeting was over the course of, I think, at least 10 years, maybe 15, with a much larger um, downward slope than I was, you and I were discussing, which is concerning, not just for me. I mean, my children are in seventh grade. They have a year and a half left, but there are probably parents that are here that have kids that just started, and they have an opportunity, and kudos to, to Jason Bloom for posting it in pure. I, I, I have regrets that I haven't been here for 10 years. But if you have, if you have young children, you should come. Um, and it's not anything disrespectful for the people that are sitting there. This is about a community, about holding people accountable, and test scores are the way that we measure things. So I would hope that all of you were engaged enough and disturbed enough, frankly, from the meeting last week, what was delivered, to find out if that was actual real information or that was some sort of uh, figure manipulation. Because if it was accurate, that's very dis discouraging and concerning, and not only addressing it, hopefully, Mr. Capuano, but also projecting a plan on how to uh, reverse the trend, if that trend is true. Did anybody else do any of that research on the board? Okay, I did yes, no, raise your hands is fine, because I think that, you know, that is your position. And that's what we entrust you with, and so I'm hoping that that's that, that more than just uh, the superintendent took that time and you're spending time behind closed doors to have a, you know, a very authentic, open dialogue amongst yourselves about where we go from here. Thank you. Someone else? Krista Ostad, uh, I'm a mom parent. I've been a mom for five years in the school, and we're so grateful for everything you've done. We've been watching a lot going on and a lot of misinformation spread. Um, so I actually got parents in the community and taxpayers to sign a letter for all of you with comments and support for all of you, for the teachers and everyone else that works here. Um, I mean, there's always room for improvement and like nothing's ever perfect. So my one thing would be that if there's ever another situation is maybe have a quicker meeting for them to get more information. But I think can I bring this up? Anyone else? Good evening, Rick Wolf, uh, 21 Right Anderson Road here in East Avenue Township. Uh, tonight I'd like to talk about transparency. Uh, when I was asked to run for the Township Committee in 2016 by Mr. Matthews and Mr. Miller, one of the things they hammered into my head was the importance of transparency. I knew nothing about politics or the political process. Uh, they were both very convincing, and as I got into um, politics here in East Elmwell Township, I realized that they were both very right, that it is incredibly important for elected officials and governing bodies to be transparent. I don't know whether Mr. Miller has changed his view on that. He can articulate that later, but I personally believe that transparency is critical. Uh, what am I seeing from this board? I'm seeing a complete lack of transparency. I'm seeing a board that doesn't want to hear what the public has to say, doesn't want the public to see what's going on here. Uh, let's talk about threats, Mr. Miller. I view your comments at the beginning of this meeting to be very threatening. People in this country have very broad First Amendment rights, very broad First Amendment rights. 
I'd like you to articulate what statutes were being violated and give examples of violations of the statutes. People have the right to be critical of their elected officials, even if that criticism is harsh, even if it's blunt, even if they curse. If cursing is how they express themselves, they are permitted to do that under the First Amendment. And if you try to stop that, you are subject to a lawsuit. The board is subject to a lawsuit. When I was mayor, and I was mayor for three terms, I made sure that we put drafts of the budget on the website as those drafts were done. Why? Because we're spending residents' money. Residents have the right to know how their money is being spent. They have the right to comment. They have the right to look at drafts and see how things progress. Were we legally obligated to do that under the Open Public Meetings Act? No. Was it the right thing to do? I think yes. The municipal budget for East Stanwall Township this year will probably be about $3.4 million. Your budget, the school budget, is going to be at least three and a half times that. To me, that puts even greater emphasis on the need to be transparent. Residents' tax dollars are going three times or more to this school than they are to the township. Residents shouldn't get a chance to see the budget only after you approve the preliminary budget. Then you'll have a hearing next month where you're going to rubber stamp it. And any comments that are raised during that hearing aren't going to go anywhere. You won't live stream the meetings. You're being threatening at the beginning of the meetings. You don't want to hear what the public has to say, but yet you're happy to spend a significant portion of our tax dollars. That's not right. This board needs to be much more transparent. And I'm sure Mr. Miller is going to speak up on that at some point because when he ran in 2017, along with Mr. Matthews, their campaign literature emphasized transparency. We're going to live stream the township committee meetings. And they did, after they were elected and Mr. Matthews became mayor for the first time. As far as I know, in the history of East Downwall Township, the township committee live streamed its meetings. There were times where we had over a thousand people who watched the video. I know why you don't want to live stream, because then you can't deny what's been said at the meetings. You can keep the public in the dark. You'll have less people come in. Sorry, that's not what you were elected for. So I find it absolutely disgraceful that you are not live streaming the meetings, the way you talk to people at the beginning of this meeting. And I look forward to you telling us what statutes were violated by last month's comments. Thank you. The statutes that were spoken against were brought up to me by members of the public because there was personal information given out at that meeting on HIPAA right that, that violated an individual's HIPAA rights and his rights to privacy. Now, he had no one here re representing him that could raise that issue, but it was an issue. My comment is I'm told by the legal counsel I have to give you that notice because we don't want to get into an issue with violating a person's rights or their right to privacy and that was what was just was violated in the comments that i was referring to in my opening remarks if someone sends an email my name is jamal cockney with me 79 Rainbow Hill Road. If somebody, K A D R I. If somebody sends an email to a public employee, what right to privacy do they have for the contents of that email, especially if it's threatening? Bingo. Are you going to go Bingo. It was only brought to my attention that the comments violated HIPAA 
regulations for what could be said. I'm not saying they're dead. I'm saying that's what I was, that was the complaint that was made. So that's. <coughs> I'm not hiding behind it. Well, there was a lot of public information that was not made public for an awful long time. Anyone else? Anything back to the table? Any communications to come to the board? Entertain a motion on 5 1 through 5 4. Oh, second. Questions? There are copies of the agenda out if anybody wants to follow them. They're right over there. They have the numbers on them from what these different motions are. Motion acknowledging the seat on 6162 and 63. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with some of the things that are uh, going on within the school. We're going to start with the 24 uh, 25 uh, budget. Uh, so tonight we're recommending to the board uh, to approve sending the preliminary budget uh, to the county office for them to review. Again, this is the final budget. This is the preliminary budget. Um, we work extremely hard to get this budget down from 5%, uh, down to its current level of the 2.2% increase in tax levy. Um, with this 2% percent maintain all of our existing programs, staffing, uh, in addition to the security officer, um, no cost athletics and curricular area and activities, um, also the variety of clubs to meet all the special needs of, of our students. Uh, it also includes our new preschool expansion, uh, which will be a cost savings uh, for many families, up to 60 students, and we're estimating that cost for these individual families with their uh, children to be between seven and 10,000 for each family that's in our program. Um, because their, our program currently, our preschool will be free, and they will not have to go outside or pay for our, our uh, preschool, which was around 700 per month last year. So that's a significant increase, or excuse me, significant cost savings it also includes extra counseling, uh, all our trips that we've had every year, from all the grade level trips to uh, Camp Bernie, uh, music trips, uh, and all of our eighth grade trips, which uh, all of our uh, students and eighth graders have been here for nine, 10 years experience and they thoroughly enjoy. Uh, also includes a new parent communication tool called uh, Parent Square, which is rolling out information hopefully to improve communication. And also, um, it helps with our supplemental materials that we we'll use for language arts, science, and that as well. Um, this month also, uh, we had a difficult bid opening for our new children, which uh, is for this room and also the middle school. We have had five people, two and five companies bid. Uh, we were making a recommendation uh, for Unitem, uh, who was the lowest bidder to install the children sometime in the October uh, and November. Um, going back to Mr. Fox and the science information. I have you know, just basic information uh, because we already had 
uh, the review of all, all our science scores. So bear with me as I try to explain this so that everyone understand. The information that was shared at the last meeting, um, I'm not saying it's not accurate, um, but it went back 10 years, which is a totally different test um, than what our current students are taking. Um, currently, right now, it was it indicated that East Anwell uh, got 21% meeting and exceed um, in the science portion of that test. When you hear that number, you say, wow, that is, that is pretty low. When you look at the state average, the state average was 18% meeting and exceeding, and the county average was 30% meeting and exceeding. The sending districts to East Amwell, and with East Amwell included, range from 22 to 30% meeting and exceeding. That's the four sending districts that go to 102nd. All of those are below 30%, or one of them might be a little above 30%. I've been in superintendent's meetings in the last two months. All the superintendents are concerned with the results of, of what's taking place, uh, and they're looking at the test being, I'm not gonna say there's something wrong with the test, but slightly faulty the student uh, schools are not passing QSAC because of this current test. Um, so where that information was shared, um, and it's, you know, for face value, it shows, oh, East Amwell 21%, everyone uh, is concerned because if they say we're not giving great education, I, I would say that we are giving just in this portion of the test, we may not um, be feeling as well as um, portrayed because of things that are going on the test. Our science department, six, seventh, and eighth grade, they are looking at it and they're looking at ways of boost, boosting that score also. Going back, I think, to the math scores, just so everyone knows, um, and I'm going to say COVID, for instance, um, but we did have, uh, we had 82% in our students um, passed algebra test, which is an advanced level test in, um, in eighth grade. Um, I think the comparison was made that our algebra scores were low, but during that year of COVID, we started in fifth grade and made the decision that we we're going to accelerate 62% of our students here in East Amwell. That's an unheard of number, 62%. Of the 62% that took the algebra course, 82% met or exceeded the expectation. So that, that's an extraordinary number with, with 62%. Now, if you look at the math score, because so many of our students were moved into the algebra, yeah, they're, they're a little bit lower on the at, um, at level or at grade level uh, test. But overall, we're doing really, 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 really well. Um, I talked to Jeff Moore today, um, and to measure our ninth grade class, there's PSAT scores, um, and PSAT scores, uh, we're scoring above all the seven districts combined in language arts and math. Um, and again, that scored the students that are attending ninth grade at Hunter Central right now using the PSAT scores. Um, and you know, Dr. Moore shared this with me. And um, you know, when he looked at the data, he was trying to be very objective about it. Um, he gave me the, the uh, bar graphs in this to, to show that our students are doing as well, or not, or not better than the other seven districts. But, okay. I hope that answers some of the questions that people have about what we're doing. Um, and also, you know, if I could elaborate on, you know, one of the, the great things about East Amwell is, you know, we're not just, you know, test scores. You know, we're meeting children in different areas, uh, providing counseling, SEL. Um, we're meeting the individual needs of each and every one of our students. Um, and whether it's foster children that, that are coming, uh, students that are advanced, we're doing everything we possibly can to, to meet their needs and where they are. And we're pretty proud of that. Um, and I think our, our teachers and our staff, um, they're here tonight, many of them, you know, they go to the extra yard um, to, to meet our students and do whatever it takes for them to have a great experience and a great education. Last night we had a drama production, it was phenomenal, and many of you were in attendance for that. So there are types of things that, that we're trying to do, um, and it, it's what our school is all about. Um, I've been here 29 years, um, I wouldn't want to be at any other school, and I think that, that's important, hopefully, you know, everyone here is supporting us um, and, and want to be the positive change and making us even better than we are today. Uh, in addition to that, um, we also received another thing that we do really well here is our, our grant team. Uh, I can't announce it fully, but we received the Sustainable New Jersey grant. Uh, we're receiving the award in two weeks. Uh, they told us not to announce it, but I figured you know, with some of the negative publicity that's going on, that I should start sharing some of these things so everyone knows that there are some great things happening at East Amwell as well. Also, the uh, the calendar uh, is being developed and um, recommending 
to be approved tonight. We've developed looking at Hunter Central's calendar, um, to try to match them as closely as possible to reduce transportation costs. Because when we're off and they're not off, that, that costs all our district the moment. So um, that's being uh, looked forward to. to uh, any questions? Yeah, I just wanted to thanks for sharing that about the, the school academics. And I'll share it after the last board meeting. Um, yeah, I'm sure many of you listened to it on Facebook, and it, it was concerning. I was up till two in the morning, looking, I looking at it more holistically instead of specific academics. And I think I was like 12 or 13 districts in before I found a school whose scores were holistically better, better than ours. That made me feel a little bit more. You know, made me feel better about the school than talking to John about it afterwards. Um, but the school is much more than just academics. And I'm you know, not disregarding, you know, I'm not saying that the, the school assessment scores aren't important, but the school's a lot, is much more than that. Um, you know, they provide a lot of services for the kids here. Um, this is a great place. I want to reassure that this is a really good place to learn and raise your kids. Acknowledge receipt of the reports. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Just as a personal note, I am listening and paying attention to everything that's going on. If you notice me looking at my phone, it's because I have a wife at home who is in serious dementia. And I am constantly on call. So if my phone buzzes, I will take a look just in case. Budget and finance, Chris, he's not here. This is a lot of money. There's a lot of non-discretionary funding in this budget. We only have discretion over about 20% of this total budget. The rest of it is preset through contracts and through other requirements from the state. So we really don't have a lot of wiggle room. The administration came to us with an original budget that increased, would have been a 5% tax levy increase. We said, go back, sharpen your pencil, work on it. They came back at a lower number. And then because of state funding, luckily, we were able to reduce it. So that we're going only to the allowed cap from the state for increasing our budget, which is approximately 2%. Realize that's in a time frame when the CPI is someplace between three 
than 5%. So we have obviously tightened the belt as much as we can. This is a preliminary budget. It will go to the state. The state will review it. They may come back and say, you've got to increase in certain areas. They may come back and say, you've got to cut in certain areas. Or they may come back and say, it's approved. The board has, from now until May, until May to continue to review this budget for any possible cuts or increases that may be required. But this is our preliminary budget. We had to have this approved by tomorrow. That's why we're having this meeting tonight. Rather than just putting the meeting off a week to meet on our own you know, Tuesday, which is our normal meeting night. There were people who could not be here on Tuesday because they had medical appointments that came up. They had other things that they had to do. And we just knew we would not have a quorum for the meeting on Tuesday. So that's why we're meeting tonight. This was the only night that seemed to work for everyone. I will allow, allow questions specific to the budget at this point. Anyone wish to address the board? I'll bring it back to the table. I have a question about the, the chart or the graph. So, this is pretty general. The general fund plus the special revenue totals out of the discrepancy of two point three million. What is the difference coming from? Is that the state that funded? Yes. And we get less than 10 percent of our funding from the state. Is that the state? Is that for us, we've been lucky if we have 10%. I, I, this is an increase. We've had as low as 7% from the state. Newark gets 90% from the state. So it's there is no more, except for small I, I school districts. I was districts. wondering if that was the difference between the two numbers was coming from state funding, and if that's something that is relatively yes. predictable. Because that is <coughs> Anticipating, we got ninety thousand more than we got last year in state funding. But well, you're getting two point three million. Is that just or no, about? No, no, no. Well, then I mean, that's what I'm asking. So when I look at this on seven point one on the total line. There's a preliminary budget of ten point nine million, and then there's the local tax levy of eight point six million. The differential is two point well, actually less than three, two point two six five, whatever. Where's that money coming from? There's um, the preschool expansion is state aid, so that's part of it. Where our general fund tax levy is sits about four hundred thousand dollars this year because of the ninety thousand dollar increase. But there's nine hundred and some thousand dollars in, in if you look at special revenue fund where it says one point one million dollars, mm -hmm. the majority of that comes from state aid. So that's why this the, 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 there's a big difference this year. Usually it's only a couple hundred thousand dollars, but because of this the uh, preschool expansion. And that's, that's the preschool ranch and the expansion that includes the big ranch that you got, right? Yes. Yes. And that's, is that a two year, one year, five year grant? You don't know. Well, at least one, and that's all you yeah. know. Yeah. It's what happens for a second year. What happens when it goes away? It could have to be done for Yeah. Right, I understand, but does, does, that, does that then mean that you've established care or service that there's going to be an expectation, and then you guys come back? charge the parents that are coming, reduce the number of people that are allowed in, or raise taxes so they are- Well, we charged them two years ago, so you probably would go back to a uh, preschool to charge. Okay. And that covered cost, what you charge? Okay. Yeah. Any other questions specific to the budget? Thank you. 
evening, Don Cressa, 38 Sandra Road. Bear with me, I honestly and truly hate public speaking. Um, anyhow, this is semi, I guess, related to the budget. I just want to say that, um, behalf of myself, um, I really hope the budget, one, um, keeps the classroom sizes small and you don't let the classroom sizes grow larger and larger and larger. Because in order to um, sustain excellence, you need to have these small classroom sizes. Also, I've said this before, I have no idea, honestly, if it's a negotiation year for the teachers, but I really hope if they're asking for whatever percentage of raise in salary that you take that into consideration. Also, as you stated, they worked, they do work very hard. I mean, I can just speak recently when I met with Miss Ernst and Mr. Lando, I have, like, I can speak volumes about both of them. I mean, the conference was on target. They knew my kid. They ha it was data driven. And I think also a lot of the grants you're talking about that Miss Ernst wrote herself. So she, I'm, I'm praising her. I appreciate what you're saying. Okay, so support the team. I have a freedom to speak too, and I'm not no. throwing anybody under the bus, sir. No, I'm not, so, no, 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 no. I'm not wanting to stop you because I don't want you to speak. This is not specific to the budget. What's so the budget? teacher salaries are specific place, to the budget. They're, they're part of the budget, but that's. And that's curriculum, I didn't get to curriculum. That's not we. So like, if teachers want whatever their increase. That's not related to the budget. I don't know. I did not scrutinize the budget. I did not scrutinize it's customers. Directly related to the budget. It's not related specifically to the numbers that we're okay, talking about. Okay, do you about. want me to save this for later or just finish so my conversation? So at the end of the meeting where you can speak more. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak specifically to the budget? Any comments? One of these does include the preschool event, by the way. of the chiller, by the way, came in substantially below what we had budgeted. Aye. 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 Aye.
intentions, motion passes. There's no report on negotiations and grievances. At this point, there is a negotiations item that will be part of the executive session at the end of the evening. Personnel and policy, Carol. Yes, um, I'm gonna do motion to approve 11.1 .1 through 11.3 separately. Um, I'm gonna do a motion to approve the Other than, you know, we did look at a lot of different options and there's uh, definite costs associated with doing live streaming upwards of you know, seven to eight thousand dollars if you do a live streaming option. That does include uh, staff members coming in demand and it depends on how many microphones you have and so forth. So um, our AV department looked at, you know, uh, and provided the cost for that. Um, and we, right now we have the option since it's on topic or no? Let the board discuss it first. Okay. Um, uh, question. Um, and, and, you know, generally in favor of recording, I think it's good for you know working families and keeping people informed. Um, you know, after listening to the, the recording from the last meeting on Facebook, you know, one concern I have is what if somebody mentions uh, a staff member's name or even worse, a student's name and negative light. Um, what, is there any way we could uh, uh, censor that or block that out? I, I'm interested in that. Technology should allow that to be able to be done after the fact. Would that be anything to be done? I would have to check with the attorneys to figure out for about Yeah, well, I mean, I applaud you for making progress in this. It's, it's a great first step. I just have a follow-up. Doesn't the school already have the ability to live stream things? No. I mean, we did a talent show. As far as I know, we don't. We live yeah, stream we, a talent we, show to we YouTube. Need, we need specific equipment. 
equipment just to do this. We're not gonna pull it from our EATV okay. to do this. That, that's part of it, and we need someone that would man it. Um, and according to with the AV department, if we go one mic, you know, we're in good shape. Um, then you go to a mixer system where you gotta put that on, add two or three mics and so forth. So at this point, we don't know where we, we would go with, uh, you know, if we're in a library, is one mic enough? If we're in here, do we need three mics? Uh, we could always look into the township building. I think that's been offered already. We're in charge. Hi, my name is Tim Matthews, I'm president of the town for a long time. On this specific topic, I, I, I actually agree with Mr. Wolf for a change. It's been a while. But I, I do agree in transparency in this, but I have to say uh, in my role and what I do professionally and the fact that I have a doctorate in national security, uh, of late, AI has added a new dimension um, with deep fakes, which we don't know what they are, with very little bit of a sound bite or video or audio, people can impersonate folks. So, uh, you know, this, this whole topic is becoming more complicated. So I would just suggest you go, you know, go at it with caution. I'd be happy to volunteer my time to the school board to advise and, and, and discuss uh, some of the, the threats and, and gaps in this kind of technology today. Ultimately, it would be great. I like the idea of maybe using the township building. You know, it's already set up, but still you run the risk of the recording becomes public domain and anything can happen. Um, I, would, I would avoid things like Facebook because not everyone uses certain social media platforms. So if the township or if the uh, school board's going to do this, uh, I think you really need to think about it. I wouldn't rush into it. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not for it. It just means I would proceed with caution. Yes. Uh, again, Rick Wolf, uh, 21 Rennerson Road. Uh, Audio recording is not nearly as good as video recording. The listener can't necessarily tell who's speaking. You don't see facial expressions. You don't see body movements. Uh, we compared audio versus video when we were considering this back in 2017. Uh, the video was far better than audio. Uh, people can doctor anything. They can doctor a video. They can doctor an audio. They can doctor the video that's being made this evening that'll be posted online. So the threat of doctoring using AI the doctor is not an excuse for not doing live streaming. If the audio is going to cost $4,500 to put up and the video is going to cost seven to 8000 to me it's a no-brainer. You spend the seven to 8000 and you do the video. I don't know why you need a staff member, member here to uh, operate it. The township committee doesn't have a staff member operating it. The clerk flicks it on, and the clerk flicks it off. Flicks it on at the beginning of the meeting, flicks it off at the end. If there's an executive session, it's flicked off for the executive session. So I have to believe that you can set it up in a way where you don't need it uh, staffed by a staff member that you're paying. And uh, this is something you really should give a second thought to. The audio is not going to be nearly as good as the video. Thank you. Thank you. Andrea? Maybe I misheard, Andrea Bonet. Um, I may have misheard, but something about raising the budget over 2%. My understanding is by the state statute, if the board or whoever's making the decisions raises the budget over 2%, they have to put it up for a vote for the public and have to be approved. If they put up, raise it less than 2%, such as 1.9%, it does not have to be submitted to the public to for, for the vote. So I just, I'm not sure if everybody's clear on that, and I think I've got it right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fox, thanks, Fox. Um, this, so when you talk about the price, whether it's $4,000 or $8,000, how much is for equipment versus a recurring cost? Setup cost versus what's the annual cost? Twenty five hundred to three thousand for someone to man it. Um, for and that's should probably be, standard. Should whether it should be, you know, operated, and then the cost would be depending on 
one single mic, one full mic, 4,000, 5,000, 2,600. So you're saying that staff member would be every year three grand? Whether that's video yeah. or uh, that, audio? That's an estimate, yep. Right, that's a ballpark. Yeah. I'm yeah. not, yeah. not chiseling yeah. anything out here. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out when you say, yeah. how much is worth, how much is in labor, and yeah. how much is in materials, because materials is a sunk cost and goes away, right. whereas the, the, the labor is a annual cost and increases. Yeah. Um, uh, um, so I was curious as to what percentage of that. So really the differential between an audio and a video is the equipment. The, the manpower is the same regardless, correct? Correct. So once you buy the video and set it up, the cost is the same. Correct. Okay. Man, it's that's what you got. Yeah. So that's what I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. Is, is that yeah. The recurring cost is the same, audio or video, is the purchase of the equipment. Correct. Okay. Question for the policy committee. Did we find, is there a reason why some districts do the audio recording versus the video recording? Because I, I know there are, so I've seen there some local, but yeah. Flemington, just, Flemington does audio. They felt that was the best um, way to go based on uh, the board's opinion of uh, video and, and meeting versus audiences. That was what their board decided. And, and, they, and I think theirs came down also when I was speaking to the superintendent uh, of their cost to, to do an audio uh, whole setup in, in their district. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Just a comment. When we started this, our legal counsel did not want us to do recording, period. He then said, but if you're going to do recording, these are his recommendations. He has written a policy for us that we can approve, which does allow us to do recording. Um, one change of words, it could be audio or just or video or either or uh, as we grow. Um, as a board, if you want to, we can make a motion to waive first reading and make a motion to adopt the policy tonight, um, either audio or video or audio or audio and or video. So that if we start with audio and we feel comfortable and want to move on to video, we could do that uh, going down the road. It's really the board's decision how it wants to proceed. If you want to table a motion for tonight for further discussion, we can also do that. I'd like to make a motion that we waive the first reading and adopt the policy tonight. Mayor second. I'm hearing we need another one to answer questions and get everything. There was not a second to the motion, so uh, we can uh, move forward with getting the additional information and make a final motion next month. Um, meanwhile, we could start looking at getting the equipment and stuff so that we do approve it, we can move as quickly as possible. 
uh, Charles, question about that. So for the next board meeting, would we have like a policy in front of us that we would be able to read and vote on? Any other questions or comments on that? Okay, any old business and new business for the board? At this time, okay, we're going to go into executive session after public comment. That doesn't mean you have to leave. We'll go to another room and then come back because action will be taken after that executive session. However, if you have something you want to say and you don't want to hang around until after that executive session, this would be your chance to, uh, to make comment. And uh, I leave you with the same provisos that I did earlier as far as just be cautious about what you say. Anyone wish to speak to the board? <coughs> now it's your turn. Genesis, where we can access it as well. 
Um, and if you're wondering, well, we would have to explain it to parents. You have, for the most part, a highly educated community here. It, it's, it's not that complicated to understand the linkage and interpret the data. So I would really request more transparency with that, please. Because if I didn't ask for the linkage, they, they weren't going to be provided to me. So that's, that's all. Thank you very much. Mr. Crescent, just to address the county in, in the budget, we do, uh, I know you may not be aware of this, we do have uh, other individuals that come in and provide counseling uh, during the school, school day to support uh, Mrs. Myers. Uh, in addition, we do use our child study team as well um, to, provide, to provide extra counseling during the time of their schedule. Right, I'm just saying, I'm a school counselor for K to 8 school, and you can five year olds and kids, I don't know how old you are, in eighth grade 13. That's, that's a big age range. And just, you know, I mean, throw in there, like, there's a school, you know, teacher shortage, not just in New Jersey, but nationally. I mean, teachers, if they're not happy, they'll see it. We're going to go somewhere else. That's all. Andrea, to answer an earlier question that you asked, our class size is from 15 to 20 students. That's my policy. So,
first I just want to thank uh, John and everyone at this table. I look at outcomes when I look at kids, and I have to say my son's 21 years old, and he's doing just terrific. Third year at Stevens Institute of Technology, acing it, and uh, he's a product of this school. So I, I urge everyone to think about a holistic education and outcomes and not teach to the test. And I will say that with authority. I work for educational testing, so I CTS in Princeton. And I've been there 19 years. And I can tell you, assessments and testing is a wonderful thing, but it's only one aspect of a child's life and their education. There's athletics, there's friends, there's social gatherings. There's a lot that goes into children that makes them who they are. And I know when you see bad test scores or whatever it is, stop pause and look at the context. I brought with me some data here um, that might be helpful just to give you some context. But there's, um, in addition to New Jersey, there's the NAEP report, which is an assessment that ETS does for the national government. It looks at the United States in total. And test scores are down since COVID. There's a big dip from 2019 to 2020 to 2021, and it's starting to curve back up across the country, every school, high school, elementary school, all schools, in all aspects. I have the mathematics, the reading, and the, um, for fourth and eighth grade data here, if you want to see, I'm not going to go into detail, but the point is, is it's going, to, it, there was a dip down. And we have to look at why, right? And look what happened, that was a unplanned for event that this school reacted super positively to a lot of schools. For those of you who don't remember, they stayed open most of the time and actually took care of your kids. Lots of schools shut down. So, you know, I think, look at it holistically. There's much more to children than a test score. And don't get caught up in measurement. I'd love to sell more tests, right, where I work. We'd love to sell a test for everything. But it's not about just testing. It's about learning from testing giving the kids the fuel they need to learn and aspire and look at the <coughs> subjects that they aspire to. Not every kid's a scientist, not every kid's a mathematician, not every kid's an artist. Right? So they're not all gonna do great in every, in every topic, in every section. So for anyone who uh, is interested, I'd love to talk offline. I can share a lot of interest information about it. And I would also, again, offer my time uh, to, the, to the board if there's anything I can do in terms of looking through the data, comparing it to the other data. I also have the data for PISA. It's another test we administer, and it's a global test. All countries. And it measures the United States and every country with respect to each other. The United States isn't doing that great. And also, all schools around the world are down during that same COVID period. So please, put it in context. Don't get all bent out of shape because you see a report and we jump on it. It's a problem in society today. We're too quick to judge and too quick to <coughs> And that's why the social media stuff is a problem too. So that's one topic that I wanted to touch on. The other one I just wanted to mention was, if I recall, I think Andrea is right, I think it is 2%, so you might want to just check your number. The cap is 2%, this budget goes to 2%. That's there good. There are ways you can go over 2% yeah. by using something called bank cap. Yeah. We do happen to have some bank cap available if we need it. We decided specifically not to go that way because we did not want to bump the taxes up by using the bank cap. And for those of you who don't know, I was actually on the township committee when Governor Christie put that in motion. And what happened was the state essentially took away the cost of local elections for school boards if schools kept it at a certain cap. So there's a trade-off. You don't get to vote on the budget, but you don't have to spend the money to run an election to vote on the budget. I personally disagree with that. I think we should vote on every school budget, personally. But that's my opinion, and I told uh, Governor Christie at the time that I disagreed with that. Um, one other thing I just want to share, an anecdote as we talk. So I think, I don't know if I was mayor or if I was township committee, I don't know, if, I think Pete was on it with me. We had an incident at the township where a resident came in and by name uh, called out a, a young man who happened to be in his last year of high school who wanted to go to West Point. And this young man um, was alleged to have committed a violent act off of his deck. It turns out it was all hearsay. 
neighbors fighting with neighbors, two neighbors at each other's throats. But that name was memorialized in the minutes of the meeting at the time. This was before, this may have been before we had video. I don't remember, Pete. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, it was either just as we went to video or when we went to audio. But the point was, any, uh, anyone who knows the vetting that a military academy goes through knows they do a search of social media, they do an electronic search. So this would come up fresh that this person was accused by a neighbor of doing an act. And I'm not going to say the names, and I'm not going to go back there, but the point is, we had to undo it. I mean, we literally had to go and try to expunge it from the record and try to delete every copy we have, but I guarantee it's out there, right? Because everything in the internet is out there, and it stays out there. So again, I, I think that you know everyone should just really realize that this is a wild world we're in right now with technology, and what you can do with technology, and the power it has to be able to be good, but also to really harm people. And kids today, I mean, all you need, as someone said, I think you said it, one thing in the public about a kid taken out of context, those kids could become suicidal. With the way peer pressure is and the way uh, social media is today. And I'm speaking as a father who has a child, and I know there are parents here, but some of you don't have children. So the people in this room that don't have children, that have a, a mouth and communicate about it, Stop. Talk to people who have children. Ask them what it's like to actually have a child and raise a child. And maybe they'll have a little different opinion. And one last thing I would mention is I recall when we do the multi-year, every five-year thing, I think, with Comcast to, to agree to that, that they did, or they used to, and they still might offer a public access channel for public meetings. So you may want to reach out to Comcast, and they might be willing to outfit the school with the technology and provide the broadcast rights. I know they used to have it, public access channels. Um, now with the internet, maybe they've gotten rid of it, but I think uh, you know, a query to Comcast, since they are the preferred vendor that our township committee continually you know, gives that right to, I think it would be a fair ask to ask Comcast about it. Thank you.
tear people down. There were people in the room last month that came in not knowing any of the teachers or really what the information was about and called for them to be fired. That is totally inappropriate. It is totally your right to do that, but it's not helpful. It doesn't move the needle at all, right? If we want to have real positive change, we have to engage in proper conversation, right? What I've taught my kids and what I would hope that other people would do for me is if, if somebody's got a problem with me, come talk to me, right? Rather than standing up in front of a room and spewing things that come across hateful, whether that was what they were intended to do or not, they came across as hateful and misinformed. Let's engage in conversation that's well informed so that we can do right by our kids. That's what we're about, right? And if we can do that while not raising taxes, all the better. Right? But bear in mind that everybody at this table is also a tax debt, right? So we're not going in and saying, oh, you know what, we're gonna get them this year, we're gonna raise it as much as we can, because we also feel that, right? So we wanna be in this together, but the only way to be in it together is to have solid, calm, genuine conversation, as opposed to pushing an agenda. Sorry, but third time again tonight. Uh, this is Rick Wolf, 21 by Nearson Road. Uh, first of all, I disagree with the comment earlier. I strongly disagree with the comment earlier that the residents of East Danville should vote on the school budget. The residents of East Danville don't have enough knowledge to vote on the school budget. The residents of East Danville elect the board if we don't believe the board is doing a good job with the budget, then we should vote the board out of office. But once you elect the board, the board spends the time going through the budget. The board is, should be far more knowledgeable than the residents on the budget. The board should make the decision. The concern I have, or a concern I have, with letting the residents make the decision on the budget, we have about 1,450 households in East Stamwell, give or take. Maybe 300, a little over 300 of those households have children in the school. That means roughly 1,100 of those households do not. The old saying that when you have children in the school, you're willing to spend, and when you don't, you're not willing to spend on school, there's a lot of truth to that. People in their 60s and 70s, I don't want to spend on the school. I don't want to spend my money on the school. Yeah, because you don't have kids in the school anymore, and I get that. Uh, it make me a little nervous when you have 1,100 households that basically don't have skin in the game voting on a budget where they really don't know much about it. So I strongly disagree that the residents should vote on the budget. The residents should carefully focus on who they vote on to the school board, and if you're not happy with the school board's decision, vote them out of office. Second, one thing I found when I was on the township committee is if you agree with someone, you're terrific, and if you disagree with them, you're hostile. I haven't seen hostility here tonight. What I have seen is passion. People strongly believe in their views. That's good. That's very good. People have different ways of articulating things. Some people speak softly. Some people like me speak more loudly. That's just the way we express ourselves. I haven't seen hostility. So I think what went on here tonight is a good thing and should be encouraged. Third, fair like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What some people think is fair, other people think is not fair. Generally, there is no clear right or wrong when it comes to fair. My own view is that if you send a threatening email to a teacher, to the school, to any public official, and your name becomes public, there's nothing unfair about that. Nothing unfair. So, threatening, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. Everyone that I've spoken to who has seen that email found it to be incredibly threatening. Uh, so, I have no sympathy for the notion that if you send a threatening email, or any email, non-threatening, 
Any email you send to a public official that you send to a teacher in their capacity as a teacher, if it becomes public, I don't see anything unfair about it. Um, lastly, and I think most importantly, uh, I'm one of those people Mr. Matthews referred to. I don't have children. So I've never had children in the school. I have four-legged children. They're homeschooled. I don't have two-legged children. Uh, that said, my view is this school is the most important institution in this township. More important than our township committee. Why? Because this school molds our youth. You catch them when they're very young, you educate them through eight. This school is the most important institution. I think it's more important than our road crew. And our road crew is incredibly important. I have no objection spending money to give our students a high quality education. The goal of the board to me is to give a high quality education at the best price that you can. But I would not sacrifice quality for price. That's my view. I pay a lot of taxes, so when you raise taxes, my taxes go up. I'm okay with that as long as I feel that we're getting our money's worth. I don't know whether the right answer is smaller class sizes, bigger class sizes. That's not my area of expertise. There seems to be studies saying bigger is better. There are studies saying smaller is better. I don't know what's right. That's up to you guys to figure out. That's why we elected you. You figure that out. I'm not going to second guess you on that. I don't have the expertise. I'm not sure that most people in here have the expertise. I am saying that I'm fine spending money to give our students the best education that we can as long as we're not wasting money. I haven't seen the budget, so I don't know whether I like the budget or dislike the budget. I will look at it once a draft is available. I'll go through it. Um, but um, if we're not wasting money uh, and we're giving the students the best education that we reasonably can, then I can't ask for anything more. Thank you. Thank you. No. Dustin Sweet, um, Seven Larson Lane. So I'm embarrassed this is my first um, meeting. What I wanted to express is I've worked in a few dozen schools in New Jersey, and my daughter goes to school here, she's in second grade. And I'm sorry, I'm nervous I haven't spoken in front of the board before, but um the message I have is, don't screw it up. By far, this is the best school that I've been anywhere near. I mean, it's not even close. Um, if this school doesn't work out, we're moving. Out of state, it's done. Uh, my daughter has excelled. She loves her teachers. Um, the experience that we are having with parents, um, with administration has been second to none. It doesn't take much, I speak from experience, to ruin school, especially the morale. It doesn't take much at all. Once you lose that morale, it falls off a cliff very quickly. The good teachers get out, then you start to take in a couple bad ones, and within, I've seen within less than a year, a district just fall apart. So I put it on you, just don't screw it up. <laughs> I just want to correct a statement I made uh, very briefly. I said that the state sets the curriculum, that the state actually sets the standards, which kind of derives the curriculum, so I apologize for that. Hi, Glenn Austin, Seven Woods Road. I just want to go and say I support you guys. I support the school, the staff, the teachers. You guys have been Phenomenal the entire time. We've got two young kids here, second grade and pre-K. My kids love it here. Like, 
right there. That, that shows you guys are doing a good job. And that hasn't dropped. So, you know, don't listen to the naysayers. Just keep going. And the one comment uh, this wolf said, I emailed my teacher about my daughter. I don't want him pulling that up and saying, like, oh, I get to read it because you emailed your teacher about how her personal development is. That's not right. But, you know? Maybe right. I agree. So it can't be this open. You know, like, oh, I emailed my teacher because maybe she was having trouble at home or at work. It's no one's business but to be my child and the teacher. Right? I totally agree. So, totally agree. There's not. That's not a threatening email. I agree. I, I was overbroad. I agree. I totally agree with you. You're right. That's in the, like, my daughter's in second grade, so she has a long way to go. It's not a When I come here with my daughter, all the teachers are saying hi to her by name. They know her by name. She's not even in their classes. So I'm going to show you the teachers care, they know who your kids are, and they're going to they're gonna do whatever they can to do what's right. That's it. here for 13, well, eight years, nine years, whatever the number is, a lot. Um, and for those who don't know, I have uh, tripped a seventh grade girls. Um, but to circle back around to the, the COVID and the test scores, yes, I'm also in education. I've been for 28 years. And that's why the conversation that Mr. Kevin had that was very respectful and we had a give and take about the math scores. I looked at the numbers. We came to a meeting. I came back and had a phone conversation. That was all excellent. What still is on what I still have concerns about is was, regardless of how the message was delivered, which would not be my style last month, um, is it accurate or not? What seems to be, Mr. Capuano, and I think uh, if you, if you want to answer, John? Jason. Jason. Um, so that you looked at all of those things. Is it really a, a, a downward trend over 10 years? You're suggesting what the, the individual was here, I think Miss McGee last um, month said was, is it's been really degrading for a long period of time. What was indicated today was a shorter period of time, both of you and even Mr. Matthews, I think, is his name from COVID? Yes, I think we all know that. You know, we've all experienced that. All the more reason to double down our efforts to, to get back on our feet. Um, however, if the trend is beyond that, that's still concerning. I know there's different tests. She was very aggressive last month. I guess my question to you, Mr. Kapp, and the board members is, I'm not sure I've clearly heard that what, if I wrote this down. So, so if your general position that the portrayal of Ms. McGee last month 
is inaccurate based on test scores. Is that is that what your position is over that 10 year period or whatever number, I think she was going back to 1996 actually or something in that neighborhood. <laughs> uh, well, starting in that period. So for a period of long time, are you suggesting that portrayal is misinformation? I think somebody said the word I, tonight. I didn't say it was inaccurate. Her, her, maybe that it was accurate because she was reading from one test score. But if you look at the park testing, and take it from 96 to 98. The park testing was a lot easier than the current test right now. Once the test changes, the norms change. And so then so relative to other, we would be still in line where we were 15 years ago? Not necessarily, not with a different test. Well, would, well how, how do I, and again, to the, Mr. Matthews from ETS, my mom worked there for years. I had my offices on Reed Road. Um, <laughs> so um, how do you, test scores, yeah, I agree with you. Um, but what else measurements do we have to hold? My kids get a test score. That's what they get. That's what they get when they get a grade. That's how our society works. Is that a, a full picture of my kids? No. I know that. Mr. Capuano knows my children. All the teachers in here know my children. They know me, hopefully a lot of you, and know that that's not what I'm about. I've been here many, many times. I was here this afternoon practicing softball with five girls. <coughs> Not because I wanted to learn math, okay? So if, it's, if it is an accurate portrayal, even if it's a different score, okay, I'm talking about the general point of it, not right down to it. I think that's something that perhaps we should all, as a community, as a board, investigate and, and, and be more collaborative. I'm happy to sit down and do the work. I'm happy to sit down and have a committee. I'm happy to do all of those things. And my kids are mostly done. In closing, I'll say, my kids have, an, have had an amazing experience here. Don't mistake me trying to hold somebody accountable for something negative. Somebody has to do that. That's part of the role as a parent. I hold my, my kids accountable. If I don't, they wouldn't be the kids that they are today. I hold myself more accountable and a part of myself than I am anybody else. I don't hate myself. I have a pretty high opinion of myself, you know. <laughs> um, but I, I, I see lots of teachers here that I've interacted over over the years. I'm passionate about my children. I'm passionate about their education. I'm passionate about the teachers here. I have I can't say, shouldn't say 99 out of the 100 teachers that I've inter interacted with, I've had nothing but great things to say about. And, and the same with the administration. So please don't ever be shy to express yourself if you're a parent for the fear of feeling like you are muckraking. If you're expressing yourself authentically and respectfully, that's a valid concern. And that's all I have done and that's what I've seen the vast majority of every parent that's been here do. And that doesn't mean I doubt the people that are sitting there. That means I'm holding them accountable. That's all. And that's my job as a citizen and that's part of the job that you accepted when you put your name on the ballot. Thank you. I, I just want to, I just want to clearly state for the record, I don't think tests suck. I just recorded that in their flyer for you. But that's why I wanted to clear the record. I never said they suck. But I do want to just reiterate, it's it's like a scale, right? You stand on a scale and you get your weight at a moment in time. There's a lot of things that go into your weight. And there's a lot of data you have to you consume about your weight. Why is it? Why are you overweight? What are you doing? What can you change? It's just a point in time measure. But it is a measure. It is a measure, and I will say with confidence that the tests, at least that I've worked with, and most professional organizations build, there's a lot of science and rigor that goes into making those tests. They're they're, they're tested for their accuracy in various ways, and I could go into that forever. But the point is, is don't blame the test. Because the test is just a measure at a point in time. You have to look beyond the test. What's the test telling you? Yeah, there might be trends. Trends may be explained. They may not be. But don't blame tests by themselves. Look, sometimes you have to look at the family situation. Sometimes you have to look at the kid group, the social constructs. Why are kids failing at school? Why are they not doing their homework? Right? I know for my own uh, son, I saw a direct correlation between sports. I mean, Chris knows. The kids that played ball, when they were playing, they got better grades. Always. When they weren't playing sports, their grades dropped. So there's a direct correlation. 
It's got nothing to do with the test. It's got to do with the whole package. So I just want to be on the record. I'm a firm believer in assessment. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my point is, that, yes, the, the problem with the tests are that then you hear everything for it to create that. That's where there's a challenge. Right. Don't teach to the test. Right, but it's still, I'm measuring what the test is. Right. And it's the same It's still an accurate measurement of my weight at that time. So, uh, you know, and that's the way, that, so it is a point, data point that's important and valuable. It's not to be completely disregarded. No, I Too. Uh, I came just because, well, initially it was brought to my attention that teachers were being brought up and uh, the potential for losing their jobs, and I thought that was wrong. Um, my daughters go here, and they have a terrific experience. I haven't met a teacher and interacted with one that doesn't seem like they really care about my kid, so I wanted to come and support the teachers. In hearing everything that's been talked about. I also support transparency though, and um, I applaud your effort for not seconding that motion and thinking about it more, because I think we need to think about what the right way to, to uh, utilize the recordings and whatever audio, visual, I think visual would be better, but I don't know why it has to be live. But I just want to say that I, I support the teachers, I do support transparency, and I appreciate you guys' work. I think that the fact that there was information that got put out, so many people attended, I think is great. And that's why I think that it's better that we be transparent. We get more community involvement. I think it would be just improve the conditions for our children. Thank you. Anyone else? I want to take a minute as part of this discussion and what's going on. Wait.
the email about the parents showing up in October. I was terrified. Now imagine if at that November town meeting, one of our teachers went into that town meeting and said what we use for a lockdown, the name of it, how it works, and that nobody's ever going to know. And then they came to the board meeting and said it again and asked our board to confirm it. And they said, we're not disclosing that information. Now that person, you don't know who they are, where they are, what their intentions were, what the email was. Now they can get out and be mad. And now they can see what we use and how it's used. Does that make you feel safe after reading that email? No. No, it doesn't. But yet the town committee let a teacher who's a parent here go on that town line, which is still up, and put that school's information on there. If it's our decision for our school, then it shouldn't be the board and we're railing against the board, then how is it their right to make that decision for another school district's parent without asking them? I've watched the smear campaign led by Jenna, and you know, and then it's coming in, so if you cannot flip papers for people, that would be great. It doesn't bother me. But then I watched that November meeting and I counted how many times they flipped through papers, the town council was on their phones, getting up when parents were talking. So I can give you a total amount if you want it later. So if you're gonna call it out on them, then I expect you to hold the council to the same standard. Otherwise, it's not about the kids and it's hypocritical. Now we have people going on Facebook on the last one that Jason posted and it's, well, they're gonna keep it in the library because nobody's gonna show up because there's not enough space in there. In January of last year, nobody showed up. In February, one person came, March, one person, April, one person, May through August, none, September, none, October, one, and then November through January was the largest public attendance. That's on us for not going. November was my first meeting, not because I don't care, I just never gave me a reason that I need to show up, but I will be at every meeting from now on. And the double standards from the town committee on all this, especially my son is the federal thing. In that November meeting, somebody came up to Good talk time. about something. Good time. And Bloom said, you know, we're kind of in the position that we're told what we can do by the state, and they're not really talking, taking into consideration. I mean, we have the same regulations like New York. And then Mike Dennis said, sounds like what I've mostly learned about, this is our hands are mostly tied. And then it's Bloom saying, yeah, I wish we could do something on our end. So as long as, you be, as long as you're being questioned on something, you can use, oh, our hands are tied, we can't do anything. But when we have a serious situation going on, we have Homeland Security and state troopers and HIPAA laws, and they can't comment, we're, ba we're railing on them. It's a double standard. You could have helped as leaders of the town to calm the emotions with the school, telling parents you wish you had answers, it's frustrating and it is scary, but the school's doing the best they can. You didn't, you chose to incite fear because fear controls the narrative. The irony of tonight is, in that meeting, Mike Dunn said, I will push back and caution that when you state numbers to residents, that the response time is going up, that's probably not fair. Did you bring any facts behind that or is that your opinion? It's scaring the residents and the ambulance is not going to be there for 20 minutes. Unless you ever prove that, I would caution you to, that you're putting that out there in a public meeting. So I would like to know from Jason Blue, when he showed up to that November meeting and said, at the end, teachers were forced to be there. Do you have a memo? Do you have any evidence to back that up? Can you show it? I'm not going to reveal my source. <laughs> no, I'm asking for like a printout. Like, you, not the whole sources. I have sources too. Like, no. You speak on not causing drama and smear. It sounds exactly what you're doing right now. No, I'm pulling up the hypocrisy right now. So wait till I go next. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And then, Jenna, you kept intentionally saying that guns are found in sleeping bag in the woods, and that he had a sleeping bag because I too got the email and read it. Do you have any proof that they were connected? Is there any report that they were connected? No. So you kept saying that because it's gonna scare parents. And yet Mike Dundas didn't call them out for not having proof in saying it. It's sowing the seeds of doubt in parents to not trust them. And then on the school issues, Jenna says, thanks John, you're right, we'll clarify it. I agree, 
if the state troopers saw us, if it's a threat, they would be here. But they didn't show up because they didn't feel it was a threat at that point. And then Dennis said, I'm going to probably hold back from any comments with students and I'm going to public investigation. So it's okay for him to not comment on an open investigation, but um, and attack me for not answering questions. And then Dennis said, knowing the real story, there's really not a lot to worry about, but the communication sends out maybe more questions than answers. But the security works, they should have taken a victory lap, but I think they caused a lot of confusion for parents to meet a lot of unnecessary alarming concerns. If you send me an email home that says nothing to worry about, but we're going to keep the kids inside and not go in have any after school activities, those two things don't add up. It's precautionary measures and it's something I appreciate. I'd rather you be safe than sorry with my kids. It's common sense. And to me, it's mixed messages on that night when we had town, town council members and teachers giggling about, you know, sports schedules so they might not be there. That's a confusing message, message to me. And you know, Jenna, I've noticed, you know, you like to post things like, take your kids to church and you're always at church. You know, I'm a Christian too, and the proverb says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, ensure justice for those being oppressed, just speak up for the poor and the helpless, see if they get justice. That individual can't stand up for himself. His family is being crushed by almost an entire town, and I can't even imagine what that feels like. My first mission trip, I was 14 years old going out of the country, and on my second one, I was 15, and a man tried to break into our room, and that was real fear. At 17, our neighbor left her husband with their kids, and he had a drug problem, and when I was home alone, he tried breaking into my house, and my dad raised home as they called the cops. That was real fear hiding under a table. Being sexually assaulted at 18, that was a real fear. In 2020, during the pandemic and virtual learning, I had postpartum depression, and I could not handle my daughter hitting me, and my son screaming 12 hours a day that driving past the school at the trees, I heard my truck close the trees because I just wanted to stop. I wanted to be done, and I stopped myself. I pulled over, and I ended up reaching out to a teacher here, asking for help because I couldn't handle everything. And the first thing they said is, you're not by yourself, no matter what we have to do, we're going to get you through it. This school saved my life, and this school is the reason my kids will have their mom. When parents started in September and November, they had real fear. Fear you manipulated and used. And the email you presented is not how it actually is. You made it sound like he enjoys stabbing frogs. When he really was talking about our school, he said, off topic, did we guys have frogs, question mark? I don't approve. Maybe that's why I stabbed one once. It was horrible, actually. He showed remorse for what he did. The sleeping bag comparison, it's the school did the right thing by sending out that email to let us know about the guns. They had nothing to do with each other, but if you keep putting them together, that's what parents are gonna remember. Why did the town council address the guns? Why did I hear about it from the school? It wasn't on school property. You're a criminal defense attorney, you know exactly what you're doing. You intentionally keep saying guns so people think they're with him and that they're scared. That's the second reason I have a problem with reporting. And at the end of the email, he goes, remember Connecticut, and he spells it really, really bad, and he goes, is that right, LOL? Now, if you read the whole email, it, it's disturbing. It's mostly about himself. Now, from that, I took, he spelled it really bad in, high, in school, and he talks about his bad spelling. Or, that they went on a field trip or something. But he never talked about harming kids, he never talked about school shootings, he never talked about, the only violence he talked about was stuff done to him. When he got, which again, between his family, when he was detained by the officer, he was already past the school. If he wanted to cause harm, he would have been on the property. He was going to get coffee. And instead we're vilifying and you know, it looks like you're leading the charge, you're saving the kids, and now it's academic, and now it's the budget, and now it's everything else. We went from a school where nobody showed up to these meetings for an entire year, to now all of a sudden everything is going to crap. I don't think it is. We had a 77 year old man commit suicide last week. What are we sending, what message are we sending to the adults, teens, and children in school? If you have a mental health problem, hide it. Otherwise, you're going to be vilified and your family. I'd rather teach my child to be kind to his family and to offer support and help him. I can't imagine what it feels like for them. 
And I also know that Pfizer is taking this email seriously, that you'll take any threat seriously. And I also know that Officer Scott will run to protect our school. Things like schizophrenia and borderline personality disorder, the earliest it'll pop up is 12. It's normally late teens to early 20s. So our kids now, we're lucky. We don't know if they're gonna have it. But I would hope that if some family in our school does have this issue, that we band together and help them. Because there's been no mental health advocacy to help anyone. And when it comes to testing, I have a special needs daughter. She can tell you every country, capital in the world, it's flagged and where it is on the map. She can do math. But if you give her reading or a math word problem, her comprehension is not there. She's not going to do well on the test. It's one test. It doesn't define an entire year of teaching. It doesn't make a teacher bad. It doesn't make our school bad. I want my daughter's progress every week. That's what you should be looking at, not just one test. You know, and Joan, who was bringing up all this, I found was on the Board of Ed in 91 for three years, and she lost a re-election campaign. And the people that ran against her were, their words were concerned parents with two young boys in school because they see a lack of progress in East Ambo and moving up to the high school. I want to make sure my kids get, when my kids get to be that age, it's a better experience. She lost her re-election, so you know what? Her math didn't add up then, and I'm not going by it now. You shouldn't trust someone who tells you that she talked to kids and they walked the, the earth with dinosaurs and vaccines cause autism. That's taught at home, that's not at school, and our teachers should not be fired for a false accusation. I'm begging everyone to stop pretending all this nonsense. If you want research, I brought tons of it. It's back. Medical, it does not off of Facebook comments. Don't listen to Rick Wolf either. For all the parents who don't know me, he's the mayor that cost this town a big lawsuit a few years ago. And in his speech, he said, People do for each other in East Amal. We don't throw each other the middle finger. But we're throwing this family the middle finger. That's not the way we live here. I'm tired of it. So I have a different perspective. I have an economic. He wants to make our life a living hell, I'm going to do what I can to make his. And now we're making a living hell for our school. Why? If you have enough people throwing mud from all sides, it's gonna look messy. I'm grateful for these teachers because I would fail as a mom without them. I can't help my kids without everything that they do. The kids at the school are so kind to our kids. They support them, they love them, they include them. It's not like that in the public. I asked people to sign a letter to show support. They said, you can go tonight if you want to speak and to show what you're grateful for. I don't need a mob to stand up for you. I need other ones causing trouble. I can come and talk for myself. I ask people to come tonight and to just support the school. So you can attack me, you can say whatever you want, but I'm still going to be here every month standing up for them. Jason Bloom, Ridge Road. It's, it's interesting, Krista. We, we obviously have disagreements, and I've known you for the last couple years. You have my cell phone number. We've texted. You were involved in the color run. Uh, you've since you know, resigned from the PTO. Um, you've been involved with Parks and Rec. You've since resigned from that. We had a good relationship. You helped me a lot with the color run. Oh, okay, well, I have the text on my phone. You have my number. You have my email. You're obviously very active on Facebook. You post comments, you take the comments away, you like something, you like something. Address the board. We don't need a personal conversation. Oh, you can go one way. Oh, you can attack him. Yeah. But he can't You can you can like a comment on Facebook, you can take the like away. Be careful, Mr. Miller. He has First Amendment rights. I, I posted a video on Facebook. I'm not denying that. 
I have never said a thing about test scores. I have never said one bad thing about a teacher in this building. I posted a video. 400 and some people watched that video. She has my number. She has my contact. She's active on Facebook. Uh, we could have had a conversation to talk about starting drama, a smear campaign, causing issues. You know what, I wasn't even gonna bring this out, but I'm gonna bring it out anyway. Let's see, Sunday night, one o'clock in the morning, she decides to email my employer, South Brunswick School District. <coughs> yeah, my superintendent of schools. This is the non-drama starter. One o'clock, I got the email. You want paperwork? I got it right here. Yeah, yeah. He had quite a response back to her. Uh, I mean, maybe I'll read the response. Talk about a smear campaign. We could have had a conversation. She has my number. She has all my contact stuff. That conversation time is over. Yeah, that, that's not happening anymore. She will be speaking to somebody, but it's not going to be me. Um, yeah, he, he totally dismissed the comment because it was inappropriate. It wasn't needed. It was East Amwell. I work in South Brunswick. Listen, I've been there for 20 years. My reputation, you know, exceeds whatever email she's going to send at 1.15 in the morning. But I'm going to put it out there for the town. You know, what, what we're really dealing with here. She cares about the kids. We all care about the kids. I'm highly involved in this school, okay, in many respects. I'm not going to get my name out there, you know, smeared. I'm involved in the PTO. I'm involved with the school. I'm involved in Girl Scouts. I was involved in soccer here. I'm not just a person that comes to complain at board meetings. So how dare you? Say my name at a board meeting trying to smear me. You won't talk to me anymore. From now on, you'll be talking to my attorney. And no, not my wife. No, she is an attorney. The one that specializes in what we're dealing with. Because it's just ridiculous. Thank you. She'd be embarrassed. some of the other things that have been talked about tonight, briefly. And I thank Mr. Matthews for backing me up on some of this. Specific to the test scores, it's not a matter of was the information given last month factual. It was information taken from different time frames and looked at and tried to put it all together. What's not in that <coughs> comparison is what happened with testing over that 10 or 15 year period. There was a time when the state test was extremely easy. Everybody was passing the test. Then there was a time when they decided testing needed to be used for more than just looking at students. It should also be used as a way to evaluate teachers. So then the test got put together in a different way. And they hired a professional company to create the test. And suddenly the test became much harder. And test scores plummeted. That went on for a couple of years. And then somebody said, oh, we shouldn't be using this to evaluate teachers. And this state doesn't want that test because it compares them to this state and we shouldn't be comparing the states against each other because it makes them look bad. So then they went back and said, well, we'll get rid of that test and we'll create another test. And then they spent three years creating a new test, which was horrible. Nobody's sure what it tested. So then they decided to create yet another test, which is the test we're in now. And that's the test that all schools are required. So to compare the tests that were taken 15 years ago and the scores from that test to the tests that were taken 10 years ago to the tests that were taken four years ago 
to the tests that are taken this year was a little bit like testing, comparing apples and oranges, because they're totally different tests that test the different things. So all you could really do with any of those tests is look at how your school did compared to state averages, national averages, district averages against other schools to try to determine how you were doing. That doesn't mean you couldn't get better or you shouldn't strive to get better. It just means that you have to look at the test in terms of its current usage. Been here long enough to know that when those test scores come in, the administration and staff look at every test. They compare the scores, they look at where all the students are, they look at what test scores, what questions were missed, what questions weren't, and everybody did well on, and where everybody ranks in terms of that overall test. And they create care programs, study programs for those individual students to help them improve. So that's one way those tests are being used. The administration may also look, use it as a way of trying to figure out if there's something going wrong with teaching. They may say, we've got three third grade classes, and two of the third grade classes did great on the test, on a particular test, and one of them didn't do well. Why? Is it the way the teacher is providing something? Is it some other issue with the test? Is it something with that particular group of students? But that study goes on throughout the year. And some of that study comes back to the board so that we can look at it. And the board asks questions. Is there a problem with the curriculum? Is there something we can do better? Is there a better way to deliver the product? Constantly with the idea of improving what the student is getting. So that's, you know, the test isn't a one test, a one item usage. It is used in a variety of ways. And the teachers and the administration use those test scores to help the students any way they can. Their usage in terms of comparing to other schools and everything, that creates a picture that makes us feel good or makes us feel bad. But that's not really the point of how a test should be used, correct? Correct, yes. So that's one of the things that, that's going on. This, I've been on this board for a long time. This is a board of nine volunteers. They're elected, but they're elected volunteers. They all bring different expertise and different backgrounds to the board. I haven't had a child in this school for <laughs> um, but I still have a very strong belief in doing what is best for the, the students and helping them be successful. Every board member here, that's what they're here for, to do what they can to help our students be successful. We love having you here. We love having you, your input. Come back as many times as you want because that gives us information we need. I was asked last month, the month before, had I seen the email. I had not seen the email. I had, had it delivered to me. And I'm gonna tell you my reaction when I was first called about it. This is somebody reaching out for help. Wasn't a threat to me. Wasn't a threat necessarily. It was somebody looking for help. Now, in reading it, could it be perceived as a threat? Yes. Because it could be perceived as a threat, certain procedures were put in place and followed. <coughs> I think it tested our security procedures very well to determine if and when there were any holes. But the important thing to me was getting that individual whatever help they need. Secondarily to that was the security of the school because it was only secondary because I knew 
the school was in good hands and the process and procedures would take care of it. And we had followed what needed to be done to protect the school, to protect the students. And that's what we do with any situation like that. That's what any one of these board members would say needs to be done to protect the school. So that, the budget is, a, you know, I can tell you right now, your taxes are gonna go up every year. <laughs> I don't know by how much, but just because the cost of everything else goes up. This budget, after it's home down, will cost each taxpayer approximately $25 per $100,000 evaluation. So if you've got a $400,000, it's gonna cost you $100 more in your taxes for the year, not per month, for the year. We had to work to get it down to that. We have had years, we actually have one year six years ago, seven years ago, where we had a negative tax income. In some ways, that was probably the worst thing we could have done. Because we had, we've been catching up to where we can be every year since then. But we are very aware, very aware, of the ability of the community to pay. And we're very thankful for the support that the community gives the school and the board to provide for your children, to provide an educational program that prepares them to go forward wherever they're going to go. That's our goal. That's what we strive to do. We create policy. The people who actually run the school, who can give you information about what's going on in the school, who can answer your questions are not the board members. It's the administration and staff. One comment I want to make to the staff that are here, and I hope this goes on. I have no doubt for some of you, if you got that same email today, it would never go beyond your computer because of everything that's happened. Don't let that if you have a concern, if you're reading something, bring it forward, let the administration work with you because that's the best way to help the individual and to protect the school. Don't just throw that email in the garbage and say, I don't wanna take this forward because it's gonna create all of this turmoil. Turmoil doesn't hurt anybody. We're going to go into executive session. We're going to do executive session for two purposes. One is to potentially hire a new principal, which we need to discuss, and the other is to approve the Principal and Supervisors Association contract, which we have negotiated. My anticipation is the executive session will take no more than 10 minutes, and action will be taken when we come back out of executive session. You're welcome to hang around. You're welcome to stay. Is there anything in motion to go into executive session? So